Well, thank you very much for uh, asking. Uh, you know, over the long run, over the long run of the world's development, there have been there are two sources of economic growth. One is uh, the growth of factors of production like capital and labor and land, and the other is the way in which these are put together in more and more efficient ways to produce output. And it's the second of these that we call technical progress, and that was a foundation of uh, growth in the industrial era, in the industrial arena. But of course, it's also the foundation of agricultural growth, which, uh, which in fact underlay industrial growth in the past 150, 200 years. So when we talk about the Green Revolution, what we're really talking about is technical progress in agriculture so that more output can be produced using the same factors of production as we did before. Land, labor, capital, uh, inputs, and so on. And new forms of putting these together, new technologies, more mechanization, all of these things are put together as a package to produce more output, higher yields uh, from the same inputs as before. And uh, the view is that we're, perhaps we're in the middle of or starting a Green Revolution 2.0 to complement or to, uh, as a follow-on to Green Revolution 1.0, which happened in the 1960s and 1970s. Thank you. So uh, uh, it's actually it's a very it's a very tricky question as to what causes technical progress. It's uh, if one thinks about uh, innovation in the industrial arena. Uh, it's not entirely clear what led to somebody to think about how to use, uh, how to use steam to produce the steam engine and, uh, and so on. Uh, but what we find is that over time, these new innovations do come in. And sometimes people say it's necessity is the mother of invention. So something is needed, so something is invented. Uh, but what's going on in agriculture very, fairly clearly over the last, over the last uh, 15, 20 years is the use of new methods and new technologies to, in, to improve agricultural productivity. And that is what people refer to as the Green Revolution 2.0. Now, the Green Revolution 1.0 was based upon the development of new seeds, new varieties, uh, which, yield, which gave greater yields. Uh, and that came, out of, that, that came out of the laboratory. That came out of the scientific work done in the laboratories. People were thinking about how to develop new, new uh, varieties, new, new seeds, etc. So some of that is happening now. Some of that is also happening now, where people are developing new, new methods uh, using new, uh, new scientific techniques. But also a lot of it is happening on the ground, where people are finding new ways of uh, weeding, of sowing, of uh, fertilizer use, of organic fertilizer use. So all of these things are going together to increase uh, uh, yield. Uh, particularly in Africa. So uh, over, again, over the long run, technical progress has been the foundation of economic growth. But we shouldn't kid ourselves, the technical progress comes uh, uh, without any cost. Uh, certainly, there are short-run negative effects that, that they can be. I mean, we all know what happened to the, those people who used to uh, drive uh, horse carts uh, when the motor car came. Okay? We all know what happened to those people who used to manufacture candles when the electric light bulb uh, came. So the notion that technical progress is costless, uh, I think we have, to be, we have to be careful of. That does not mean that we reject technical progress, of course, because that is a foundation of growth and foundation of rising living standards. But those people who currently might lose out as a result of technical progress, we have to have a special uh, need for. Because among other things, uh, first of all, they will be affected negatively, and that is bad, particularly if they're poor people or poor women. But also, they might actually stop this happening. They might, they might come in the way and use political methods to stop technical progress taking place. Uh, so for all of these reasons, I think policymakers have to be very aware of the short-run costs. In particular, a very important aspect of the short-run cost of technical progress is when technical progress uh, displaces labor. When labor, less labor is used, again, from a long-run point of view, that's good. From a long-run point of view, of course, it's good. But from a short-run point of view, it's not so good for those who are actually displaced. Uh, from they, they, lose, they lose jobs, they lose work. Now, of course, if they can immediately be hired into new, new positions, new, new growth in the economy, that's good. But to the extent that that doesn't happen, I think policymakers have to be very aware of this and be ready with forms of social protection, which will aid, uh, which will aid the system, aid the whole country over into the new era of technical uh, progress. Thank you.